Hello, can you guys hear me? Okay. Cool. Okay, great to see you all. Let me set up my device. Okay. okay, thanks for the intro. Great to see you all. These slides can be found in the talk.dev, uh, talk.qo.dev. And then today we will talk about Avalanche, uh, specifically scaling Avalanche with Sumnet. So we believe Avalanche is special because we have Sumnet and then we have a, we built a protocol using the novel the consensus algorithm. So today we will talk about the Avalanche consensus and the Avalanche network and then Avalanche Sumnet. So my name is Kyu Ho, joined Avalefs a year ago. I'm a protocol engineer working with the platform team. Get to work with very smart people. So today I'm presenting the work done by the team. Just wanted to mention that. So the recent FTX event was a great reminder that it is great responsibility to work on open, immutable financial systems. So so just like church was separated from the state and the politics, I think we need money separated from the politics and then the state. So for that, I think we strongly believe in the decentralization and then system that is censorship resistant. And then we have left want to digitize all assets in the world. So for that, we need a system that can scale like horizontally. And then as we make progress as an industry, like block spaces and then layer ones are being commoditized. So, and feature wise, as you can tell, all layer ones converging to the same. So for example, like the Avalanche and the Cosmos pioneered the idea of app chain. But right now, Polygon and then Binance chain also support the app chain. So to seize this opportunity, we believe you need web two like reliability and then the underlying layer one will support the app-specific chain ecosystem. So here are the steps to realize those like, visions. So we need scalable, scalable system that can scale to like, hundreds of millions of nodes. And then we need like, consensus that can coordinate among that many number of nodes. And then just like a web tool, like Google is separated from Facebook, so while app, while each app can talk to each other, like we need a system that can support like app specific chains. So as you as you can tell, like we believe Avalanche can like uh, solve this scalability issue with novel consensus algorithm, and then Avalanche subnet, in a decentralized way. So first off, what is Avalanche? So Avalanche is a layer one, layer one blockchain uh, launched uh, two years ago. We are EVM compatible, so you can bring all your Ethereum tools and then apps to our chain. And then we built a network using the novel consensus like, algorithm called like, a Snowman, so it's, like, a, which makes it more reliable and then scalable. And then we also have a subnet that enables the creation of application-specific blockchains for different use cases. So fast forward today in July, the network peaked at 3.6 billion requests per day. And then the other day, we just hit the uh, all-time high transaction count, 2 million transactions per day. And then, like most important, the low latency was sustained at all times, so with instant finality using our consensus algorithm. And then if you look at the data, time for a block to be accepted from its issuance, issuance is uh, 20 to 40 milliseconds. So, and then even more important, like there was no outage, like extremely reliable. 
and more chart here. So this is the thumbnail effect. So if you look at the red in the graph, that's the primary network C chain. And you can see the slight the increase in the gas usage there. And then if you look at the green, that's the application specific chain, DFK subnet. And then um, like imagine all these apps compete on the same chain and then competing for the same like block space. It's gonna blow up the gas price and then the gas price will go up for all the other apps. But each in Avalanche, each, uh, each chain is feature and the application specific. So which makes it more scalable and then reliable. And then another thing, so if you have a system that is multi-tenant, the system is very likely to be overloaded because there is no isolation. And if anything goes wrong in one of those apps, if that is like multi-tenant, you can have a correlated failures. But in Avalanche, you can have those apps in an isolated subnet. So this is another data from November, like with all time high gas usage, like people sending tons of transactions to our chain. And then with fast consensus, all transactions are settled like instantly. And then because the popular chains are isolated in its own subnet, there is no gas spikes, I guess fee spikes from other apps. So just look at the gas usage of a DeFi Kingdoms game subnet. There's a popular Web3 the game in our ecosystem. And then recently it had more gas consumption than Polygon and Binance chain in November. So many are interested in the TPS numbers, transactions per second. And then in theory our consensus can handle more than 5,000 TPS. But you can tell like from this real usage, like even handling from 500 to 1,000 transactions per second is enough. And then for comparison, like a Visa, the credit card system, like recent report, like a show that they doing the 1,700 TPS, like by the average. But Visa is centralized and the Avalanche is decentralized. And then while, be, while being decentralized, uh, we can do much more TPS than Visa credit card. And then we also have some net, so just a matter of time we surpass the, the Visa TPS numbers. So another benefit of some net how is how you can customize the virtual machine configurations, and then you can allow high throughput settings to achieve super high TPS. So for, we have a some net EVM which is just like um small EVM that you can run on in your own chain in your subnet. And then you can adjust some like a transaction post settings and then guess cost in the subnet EVM and then you can easily get over like 6,000 TPS. So just to recap, we have consensus with instant settlement and then we are globally distributed and then decentralized. And then we can horizontally scale with subnet. Now let's talk about consensus. Yeah, so to put everything into perspective, like we will go over each family of consensus and then explain why Avalanche consensus is special and then better for permissionless blockchain. So what is consensus? So assume multiple people proposing multiple values at the same time. And then consensus is a mechanism to choose one single value amongst all proposed values. So in the context of blockchain, the consensus answers the question of whether this transaction should be included in a block or not. So to clarify, proof of work and proof of stake are not consensus algorithms. They are civic control mechanisms. So Bitcoin proof of work uh, is not a consensus. Like Bitcoin, in, in order to achieve the consensus, Bitcoin used the longest chain selection rule and then for the same reason, proof of stake does not achieve consensus by itself. It has to be coupled with other like PVFT, Tendermint, Cosmos, or Avalanche consensus algorithms. So proof of work, proof of stake doesn't give you the agreement. They only give you the rate limiting. So most famous and still widely used is the Paxos from Leslie Lamport. 
It is fast because it assumes small and aesthetic membership, but it does not scale beyond certain size of members. Like most production Pexos cluster only have three to five members. And then it is also permissioned because the Pexos does not handle like a Byzantine fault. So it's not a good basis for permissionless blockchain. So not come out the consensus for Bitcoin is fantastic because unlike classical consensus, you don't need to know who should be in the system and that you don't need to know how many should be in the system. So any Bitcoin miner like, can come up with the block and can participate in the system. But it is slow. You, know, you can only do like three to five transactions per an hour and then you need to wait from 10 to 60 minutes for a transaction to be finalized, which means transaction to be included included in a block. And then not sustainable, like even if there is no decision to make or even if there is no transaction to finalize, you have to keep mining. So what about these new things? So Avalanche combines the best of classical consensus and then the best of Nakamoto consensus. It's a new paradigm in probabilistic safety consensus protocol. Like it's inspired by epidemic protocols and then gossip network. So it gives you quick finality and then scales very like easily, like a very low latency. So because there is no need for precise membership to reach an agreement. And sustainable, we call it like quiescent. Uh, meaning if there is no decision to make, the protocol comes down, quiet down, and, and there is no energy like uh, spent if there is no decision to make. So here is the independent report from Crypto Carbon like, Ratings Institute on the energy expenditure. And then they found that the Avalanche network only requires the energy of 46 US household. So given that the Avalanche network uh, processing millions of transactions per day, the, it has the, has the minimal environmental impact. So the Avalanche consensus builds on the binary consensus, and that means you just have to pick one to make progress. And then the definition of making progress here is deciding on a single value. In this case, just red or blue. So a basic idea is very simple, like imagine a stadium of a very big crowd, and then you don't know how many, and then you don't know who's in the stadium. And then at the beginning, you just pick one color, like red or blue, it can be any color. And then in blockchain, you just pick one transaction among the conflicting transactions. And then you sample the size, constant size sample of let's say five on, or on yourself, and then pick the, pick the majority. So say you say, let's say you have a, like a you see three out of five people prefer like red color and then you just pick the red, and then even if you the network is evenly split, if you do the repeated random sampling, the network very quickly decides on the single value. So we can also say the protocol is designed to tip, because we don't want consensus to be stuck in the middle. Like we just want the consensus to decide on a single value. So the core idea is very simple. I can just like show it to you. So here is the very, very basic representation of the consensus. So you have this node and the neighbors of red or blue. And then the, it first it samples the peers and then it sees the simple majority. Here is red. And then the actual implementation is slightly different. Like it just picked the color, whatever color is in the incoming query, but you get the idea. You just pick the majority. Like uh, here, three out of five is red, so you just pick the red. And then it becomes the majority color red itself. And then this process is repeated in parallel, like at the same time in all node. So unlike classical consensus, where you have to ask everybody about their preference, like, you don't have to do that. For each round, each person only need to ask a constant sized sample. Let's say you have uh, 1,000 members, and then you only ask 15 people out of 1,000. 
but repeated multiple times. And then the sample size, 15 is constant, but the sampling itself is randomized. So you're not asking the same people like over and over again. Like you just randomly sample like the people around you like for each round. And then the round complexity is uh, logarithmic for each transaction to be finalized. But if you amortize that over time, it's a constant O of N for reaching an agreement. So extremely fast in finalizing your transactions. So after this meta-stable process of random sampling, we all converge to the same value. And we say the protocol using the properties of meta-stability. That is, if there is a significantly enough bias, it is impossible for that ever to be pulled back. And then there is no like, point of no return on the cascade. So once you reach, let's say, 70 or 80% of the network, you already passed that point of no return. So basically guaranteed to remain skewed that way. So that's why we named the protocol Avalanche. Like a meta stability is a precarious state that can be easily like disturbed. So just like a minor disturbance can cause the mountains of slide, and mountains of snow to slide, the sequence of random sampling perturbs the conflicting state. And then as a result, you're causing one side to the it make edge over time and then amplify that imbalance between two choices. So chain reorg or chain reorganization happens when a block is deleted from the blockchain in order to choose the longest among the conflicting chains. So Avalanche cons consensus has an instant finality. So there is no chain reorg or chain reorganization, so we don't need to have that like a longest chain selection rule. So to be more precise, like there could be a short per period of time two processing blocks are in conflict, but we don't expose that to the users. So that is like uh, as a user to the Avalanche protocol, like you will never see the block reorg. So fast finality like is essential in gaming. Because imagine a game user buys an item, but later finds out the transaction that they think was accepted was reverted. And then in that case, just you, the, the user just lost the item. And then also essential for asset breaching, because otherwise we have to wait like much longer to ensure that source chain has no like a deep reorg. And then also this is very important for like a payment. Like imagine the merchant got paid but after 20 minutes, like due to deep reorg, the trans transaction get can like can get reverted. So in that case, merchant just lost the item for the uh, just lost the money for the good. So Avalanche achieved the fast finality without compromising on the like decentralization, and then we can do that even without lowering the protocol security of like smaller committee size. So it can scale the validator set to millions and they still achieve the fast finality. So let's talk about Somnet. So we're not a singular like a monolithic blockchain. We strongly believe in the multi-chain world. So our platform, like primary network itself, is divided out of functionalities. So we have an exchange that runs DAG, DAG, directed Excel click graph with partial ordering. And then we use that for fast exit exchange. And then P chain is for managing the validator and then subnet. And then C chain is the EVM chain, like smart contract chain that is executing your smart contract with Ethereum APIs. And then in the primary, primary network, you can freely, freely move assets between the chains. And you can move like a box from X to P and then P to C. And then to create a subnet, you must validate the primary network by staking Avox tokens. So this is, inc this is to encourage the shared trust model because the underlying Avox token will be used for cross subnet exit exchange. And then the primary network in the mainland is also a special kind of subnet. And each subnet can have a multiple like a blockchains, like the primary network. We have a X, P, and C chain. And then Somnet is a subset of Avalanche validators. Like you can select a set of primary network validators, and then they get to decide 
like their own roles on the new virtual machines. It can be anything. You can build your own EVM or you can build your own virtual machine for gaming and then you can have your own like a native token if you decided to run like EVM on some net. And then this is how we horizontally scale. We enable custom blockchains for different use cases. Again, uh, Subnet is a subset of Avalanche validators, and then Subnet is a group of validators in Avalanche that is running the same virtual machines. And then each Subnet has its own blockchain state as a function of division. And then, like, especially it's becoming popular among Web3 games. So and another great thing about this heterogeneous architecture, you get better failure isolation. Like even if something happens to the C chain, it would not destabilize X chain. And then recently we had a bug in the P chain caching layer and the, it was slowing down the P chain, but we were still like full like speed on the X and C chain. It was not impacted. So the, this design has better fault isolation and then better reliability. So uh, to recap, Sumnet is a group of validators in Avalanche that is running the same virtual machine. And most important, you use Sumnet to build blockchain. So if you're running Sumnet, you don't need to write your own BFT consensus, and then you don't need to write your own database. And then just by using the Sumnet, you get the instant finality Avalanche consensus, and then the state management. So the whole point of Subnet is if you don't need high composability with existing EVM, like a C-chain exit, you can move to your own economy with your own token to free up the block space. So gaming is the best use case for this. Like Kravada is a popular Web3 game on Avalanche, and then which used to congest our C-chain, EVM chain due to very high popularity. So as a result, uh, it was surging like gas fees for like all the other apps. But in May 2022, they recently moved to their own subnet. And then as a result, you can see in the graphs, like rapidly decreased the gas fees in the C chain. So yeah, this, re this was really awesome for, for everybody. Was the C chain was able to free up their block space and the Kravata was able to have its own like, economy in the subnet. So uh, now we can discuss some hot topics many people ask. So, so what makes Avalanche different than Cosmos, Polygon, and Clayton? For now, let's focus on the consensus. And then because this, for decentralization, it is important that anybody can participate in the network. So, so first, uh, in Avalanche, there is no limit on how many can participate in the consensus. <coughs> Excuse me. So in theory, we can handle millions of nodes in the network. But on the other hand, other chains uh, you still using the leader-based classical consensus. So they are limited on how many can, they can participate in the consensus. So Cosmos, uh, they are incrementally bumping up their cap, but still kept at 200. And then Polygon and then Clayton, they are still kept at like 100 node. And then for games, you never want to have a block rework. Instead, you want the fast finality. And then not many are talking about this as we are still early in the industry. But this is something that matters a lot at scale. And then as you can see here, all Avalanche transactions are finalized within second. And then actually mostly like take less than 700 milliseconds. And then plus, if you deploy in the subnet, you can further optimize the consensus parameters to achieve even faster finality. And then these days, most layer ones, as you can see, provide like a subsequent finality. And then Avalanche and the Cosmos have no block rework. Some other chains have block rework, and then some like even hold their chain in, the, in case of a block rework. 
And then the real question is, how is this different than layer twos? Like, we believe layer two is great because it can allevi alleviate the exponential, like a state growth of like a base chain by just posting the final hash on the base chain. But it comes with the trade-offs. Like, you need to ask yourself, like, whether you really need the full settlement on layer one, or whether you really need the full security of Ethereum or other layer ones. Because you might be trading off the usability, the decentralization, or maybe like a slow finality. So we believe such a security model should scale dynamically, like with the amount of value in the application. So if you build a game for a specific market, like you may not need the entire security of Ethereum. The, we believe better approach is as your chain economy grows up with more value, you scale up the scalability. And then this is what Somnet does. We provide elastic on-demand security. So if you want, then you can add more staking validators to the Somnet for better security. So why should I validate Somnet? So when you validate the Somnet, you also validate the uh, Avalanche primary network. And then we recently released permissionless like a Somnet feature. So where you validate the Somnet and then you get rewarded with the um, native Somnet token. Now you can also validate the primary network so you get rewarded with the AVAX token. So yeah, since you uh, reward, get rewarded with the Somnet token, I think this will help us decentralize the Somnet. So when you have a Somnet and then create your own Somnet token, you may ask how to transact between the Somnet. And then this, is, this will be possible very soon, like still in the active development. But even today, you can pass messages between the two different VMs, of course, different like a subnet. But we don't have the native subnet as a bridging yet, but it will be out very soon. And then we are a huge fan of Rust programming language. Recently, we announced the support for Rust VM. Previously, you need to write in Golang. But now you can do that in like do that hundred percent in Rust. And then the the best place to get started is Avax the network. And then we have this tool called Avalanche CLI that lets you spin up the subnet within thirty seconds. So it's a great like, playground. So check it out. So this concludes my talk. To summarize, we never we ne, we not. We went over briefly why we need blockchain, and then explain how Avalanche consensus achieves the phase finality, and then how Avalanche subnet can help you achieve scalability and the reliability, and then how Avalanche subnet support app chain and then custom like token and network. So that's all I have for today. Thank you.